All right, so I just kind of wanted to give a little bit of a rebuttal in regards to how the Void Emissary ends up working out. Um, I saw some people in the comments talking about how you can just line of sight the cast, and it's not intended to be tanked and stuff like that. Um, but I'm going to be showing a couple clips here, and I'm going to be kind of showing like reasoning like why you can't actually reliably be looking to line of sight the cast. So first off, your tank and your melee DPS are going to want to just completely off themselves if they have to literally like run... 20 to 30 yards away from the mob that they're trying to kill in order to be able to line of sight this cast after the second cast ends up going off. Potentially after the first cast if you actually end up doing it on high enough levels. In addition to that, the mob is not movable, so it's not really practical for you to even be able to put it on like a spot where you can even um, get in good line of sight. In addition to that, the mob will be uh, situated inside of a pack that doesn't have like line of sight nearby. An example of this is like uh, the dervishes in Temple of Seth Rallis. Um, I know that I have a clip right here of a freehold where I wasn't able to even line of sight it on the far side. I probably could have line of sighted it, line of sighted it on the left side with that crusher, but I would have potentially pulled the crusher, so we had to pull the crusher beforehand. So it's not very practical for you to even be looking to line of sight it a lot of the time. And in addition to that as well, it's just. It's so much of a damage loss for the rest of your group for um, you guys to be looking to line of sight it every single cast just because of how long it takes melee and tanks to get out of there. Obviously for ranged DPS and for multi-dotters this is going to be pretty good, but like it's going to feel just so horrible for the rest of your group. Another major issue with how the Void Emissary works is that it's either going to be horrendously overtuned or laughably undertuned similar to how like almost bursting ends up working out so basically either the casts don't matter you don't have to look to line of sight you don't need to blow major cooldown resources or defensives on it and it's just kind of something that flops over on the alternative is what we see currently where it's like i don't know how i deal with this there's no way we have a, even a chance of pulling it so we have to avoid that pack at all costs if we can't avoid some of the Void Emissaries, we either need to blow Bloodlust or major damage cooldowns. We have to line of sight every single cast. Maybe that key just isn't doable that week, so maybe you're just going to have to check back and do a different key because, because like, just this Void Emissaries placement on a week-to-week -week basis is just super, super toxic. And I know that they said that they don't want you, like, having to feel like you need to reroll keys or delete keys or whatever else. But with this week-to-week -week thing, it, it might end up happening just because of how the Void Emissary ends up getting placed, where just some keys are straight up just instantly dead, just straight up dead in the water just because of placement of the Void Emissary. Uh, so overall, that's what I wanted to say about the Void Emissary. Obviously, I would expect tuning. I Dude, I hope so bad that that mob literally gets its health like cut in half. Like The, the cast can be deadly, but that mob has just entirely too much HP where you have to end up blowing so many cooldowns on it that it's like almost not even fair. So we're going to see what ends up changing with that in the next upcoming weeks, next uh, couple of PTR cycles and that sort of thing. So overall, hope you guys liked the video. I'll see you guys later. Peace.